Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video I'm going to be reviewing Linux Lite. So here we are. Uh, I've started on the DistroWatch web page. Uh, these are the list of distributions I'm working my way through. Uh, all the way down to number nine. We've got reviews for the top eight there. So today it's Linux Lite. So if we go to the Linux Lite website uh, you've got this little tab at the top that tells you most of the things about it. everything else is just ads. So um, there's three pages here. So it says Linux, Linux Lite is a gateway operating system. Your first simple, fast and free stop in the world of Linux. Um, by that, um, I'd imagine that means they don't expect you to stay on it. They expect you to try it out and then move to a, a different version of Linux later on. There's no reason you couldn't stay with it though. Um, our ongoing mission is to make the transition from Windows to Linux Lite as smooth as possible. And Linux Lite is a free operating system based on Ubuntu long-term support. Second tab. Uh, it's just two clicks to update your system, set notifications, and keep your computer up to date. And there's no TPM required. And finally, an intelligent, intuitive approach to design a familiar Windows-like desktop with a free Microsoft Office compatible Office Suite. Anyone guess what that Office Suite might be? And then choose from thousands of free, easy-to-use applications, never pay for software again. So uh, you've got all these features here. So you can click Features Desktop and it'll come up with a list of the desktop features and then you can work your way through all this. Uh, if you go down to the download page, this is where you would see a little bit more information. Um, you can see that it's based on Ubuntu 22.04.2, um, but it's this requirements thing that I wanted to show you. Uh, Windows 11 uh, requires four gigabyte memory, Linux Lite 768 megabytes. Now, I think if you had 768 megabytes, your system would probably not last too long before it slowed down to a halt. But uh, it's a claim that Linux Lite makes, and we'll be looking at that later on. Uh, Windows 64 gigabytes of storage, uh, that's the bare minimum really for Windows 11. I'll give it a couple of months and that'll be gone. Uh, Linux Lite, uh, 8 gigabytes. Again, 8 gigabytes is a little bit low. Um, I know these are the minimal specs, but uh, I'd say 20 to 30 minimum really. Uh, Windows 11, uh, UFE Secure Boot Capable, uh, Linux Lite. There's both of those and legacy capable as well. Uh, TPM is required for Windows 11, not required for Linux Lite. Uh, as you can see all the way through, the um, requirements for Linux Lite are a lot lower than they are for Windows. So if you've got an aging PC, Linux Lite should be the sort of system for you. Um, installation's quite straightforward. I've got a guide on my YouTube page here, uh, just youtube.com forward slash at everyday Linux user, and there's a how to dual boot Windows 11 and Linux Lite. If you want to install um, on its own uh, and not have Windows alongside it, um, just choose the um, option to make it the only operating system when you're doing the install. Uh, so th you could follow this guide and get to where you want to be. So we start off um, with this leaf image. Uh, you can change these backgrounds. So if I click on desktop settings, there's different coloured ones, red, etc. And there's other images you can use. Stonehenge. But for now we'll stick with green. Let's look at the performance of the system. If I open a terminal, you can see that we're using 988 megabytes. And if you think I'm recording video at this moment in time, that's not bad at all. The software that comes with Linux Lite, uh, we'll start with Linux Lite uses the XFCE desktop. Um, so it's really lightweight. Um, but for Windows users, it should be familiar. It's got this whisker menu here and it's a customized one. So uh, one thing I did notice, it doesn't give you the program names. It gives you a description of the programs. You can change that with an XSCE. Uh, in this case, Steam, it does give you the program name. Um, but um, in most cases, it just tells you what it is, like a web browser. Uh, it's worth noting that um, some of these um, applications I've installed myself. 
so here's the accessories. Uh, the games, none of these came as standard. I've installed those myself. Uh, graphics, um, image editor uh, is GIMP. And you'll see that it loads quite quickly on the system, which is the whole point of Linux Lite is it's lightweight. Uh, so we've got a paint program, a bit like Windows um, Microsoft Paint. And then we have um, a photo manager. In this case, I have Shotwell. And you can see I've got some photos here. So other applications um, under internet, uh, you've got Mail Client, which is Thunderbird. Uh, interesting choice of web browser. It's actually the fully fledged Chrome. And you've got KDE Connect, which enables you to control your desktop with your phone. Um, it makes your phone the mouse pointer. In theory, you can send text messages, etc. Steam doesn't come in by default. Under multimedia, uh, CD DVD burner, uh, which I'm sure everyone uses in 2023. Actually, I do. But um, then there's VLC media player. And the video editor, simple screen recorder, and sound recorder I installed myself um, for the purpose of making videos. And Spotify, I installed to prove that you could install software um, via the application uh, package manager. And then under Office, no surprise, the um, package is indeed LibreOffice. So let's look at hardware support. As you know, my PC, um, sometimes the Wi-Fi does or doesn't work. I tend to use an Ethernet connection. But you can see, if I enable Wi-Fi, um, my Wi-Fi connections appear. It's worth pointing out that it worked by default, but um, I, when I came into the additional drivers window here, um, it did have a proprietary driver. And it was important to install that because um, otherwise Bluetooth didn't work. So if you have one of these real tech devices, you'll need to um, enable it, uh, apply changes and reboot. Uh, the other thing you might notice down here is that I've got this HP icon. Uh, if you try and use the standard print settings to configure your printers uh, for cups, it doesn't actually do it. I had to install the HP lip um, package and uh, that enables me to connect to my um, HP printer. When it comes to installing applications, you have two um, packages available. Light Software is one of them. Uh, it asks whether you want to update your software sources. Always worth clicking yes. And then you get this option to install or remove software. And the thing with the light software installer is it gives you a list of curated packages of things that you may want to install as shown here. So if you want Audacity, Dropbox, um, if you want to burn a USB, use an etcher. Uh, you've got IDEs, you've got a handbrake for video. Um, Ripping, uh, Kodi Media Center, uh, Michael, Microsoft Edge browser, uh, music players, OBS Studio, uh, loads of stuff here. Skype, Zoom, Wine, VirtualBox, etc. All all this stuff here you can install one click, done. And to prove it um, under multimedia, you saw that Spotify is indeed installed. Uh, the other way to install software with um, Linux Lite is using Synaptic. Now, Synaptic is more old school and it's a lot harder to work your way around this. Uh, essentially, you want to look at sections and this gives you the different types of sections here. Uh, so if I click on science, it will show me all the sort of science programs available but quite often you, you 
it's hard to find necessarily which package to install in this method. It's it's like a graphical version of um, the apt repositories. So um, if you're used to using the command line, you can still use the command line, but this gives you a graphical way of searching for packages in the apt. So for new users, this might be a little bit more convoluted, uh, but it's all a part of keeping Linux light light um, by installing dev packages rather than flat packs. Um, you achieve um, the ability to keep your system light. So what happens if you do want to install flat packs? Well, I recommend installing the GNOME software manager. So if you go under the universe here, you should be able to scroll down and see GNOME software somewhere. There it is. You need the software, you need the common and the flat pack plugin you can of course search for this um, using that and that gives you that you can do snaps as well if you want to uh, the one thing you will need to do with the flat packs is you need to um, enable the flat hub repository the best thing to do here open a new browser worth noting with Linux Lite also is when you open Chrome, uh, the default web page is Linux Lite website with a search facility. Uh, I guess it's a way for them to make money from adverts, etc. Uh, you can make def uh, Google your default page if you want to. Um, so if you search for install Flatpak Ubuntu, then you can go to the Flatpak quick setup guide and then select the distro you want to install for uh, and Ubuntu is the first one. I know we're using Linux Lite but it's based on Ubuntu so it's the best thing to do and this gives you everything you need to know to get it um, installed. So you could install it via the command line using this command and then installing the plugin and then adding the repository. But if you use Synaptic to add this in you can then just run this command to add the repository then what you need to do after is restart your computer otherwise um, it doesn't show up and then from there you can go into GNOME software it's here just search for software and you can search for things like if I wanted to search for um, Steam for instance uh, there is a little bit slow um, returning that stuff, but it, it did do it. Uh, you can see I've installed it there. Uh, you can search for VS Code. That's not available in the light install in the light installer or in Synaptic. Uh, there's three versions you can install. These are the flat packs, so you can install those uh, simply by clicking that and then clicking install, and away it goes. So that's how you install software. I'm going to just minimize that. You've got this control panel here. This is the standard um, control panel that you'd get for um, XFCE. Uh, the, the bit to note is this light stuff down here. Uh, you can change the enable or disable auto login. You can select or deselect desktop icons. Uh, this light software, which is the software package manager, and light tweaks, which lets you do things like um, clear out your whisker menu, empty your trash bin, and things like that. And then you've got this light widget, and you can enable or disable the widget. So if I enable it, you see um, you get this thing in the bottom right hand corner, and it basically tells you uh, how long since your last update, what your CPU usage is like, how much memory is being used, etc. Uh, so I'm going to disable that. Uh, another thing worth noting is when you first start Linux Lite, um, you see this uh, welcome screen and the welcome screen has this install button which clearly you don't need to do if you've actually installed and you can uncheck this box here which would mean this welcome window doesn't come up when you first boot 
And the main bits of interest are uh, when you first start Linux Lite, you want to install the updates by clicking this button. And it's just a case of working your way through the list, install the updates, install your drivers, set a restore point is quite a good one. It's basically uh, once you've got everything set up the way you like it, set a restore point. And then if something should go wrong later on down the line, you could just restore to that restore point and everything's as it was before. You can add language support and things like that. To, to get back to the main screen, click on the home button. Uh, under the support, there's things like, there's the manual, there's forums, there's uh, all sorts of support here. And if you feel generous, you can d contribute and donate to the Linux Lite project. And uh, it's a bit of a whirlwind review, this one. And the one thing I would say is missing from a software point of view is an audio package. And to summarize uh, Linux Lite, um, easy to install, uh, fairly easy to, to install other software packages. It's got a good set of software packages to start with. Uh, performance is great. Uh, it, 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 it hits the light thing very well. Uh, installing packages other than the ones in the light software um, package um, application is um, probably trickier than it is on other systems. Uh, you can get around that. Install GNOME Software Manager and it's set up flat packs, and then you're good to go everywhere. Bearing in mind that what makes Linux light light is the fact it doesn't use snaps and flat packs. So as soon as you start adding flat packs and snaps in, it might slow your system down. So there's a trade off there. There's a reason to use Debian packages, and that's because they're quick. Would I use uh, Linux Lite over other similar distros? Possibly. Uh, it's, it's, if you've got older hardware, it's definitely worth considering. Is it better than MX Linux? I'm not sure about that. Uh, I think I would go MX Linux over Linux Lite. Um, I'd probably go Manjaro over Linux Lite as well. Um, but it is a good um, operating system, especially good for older hardware and for people coming from a, a Windows background. Um, it's quick and it's fairly easy to use. And that is the end of the review. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.